All right, welcome, my friends, to another edition of Extreme Health Radio. This is going to be episode 712. So we'll put the links to everything we talk about uh, at extremehealthradio.com slash 712 for today's show. I hope you're doing well. I hope you are keeping a sane mind. And I hope you're taking care of yourself because in these crazy times right now, it's uh, really easy to stress out and get frustrated and, and all of that. So I hope you're doing well and taking care of yourself wherever you're listening in the world today. This is going to be an awesome show. we got Jason Prawl on the show. He was on episode 610, uh, and he's the man behind the Human Longevity film, and he's got a new summit coming up that I, I really want to talk about because it gets into a lot of the foundational aspects of our health. like. How do we optimize our lifestyle and our environment, you know, to promote health? And we're going to talk about that on today's show. Um, I'll introduce him in just a second. Um, if you're new to the show, we do shows every Friday morning, and those shows get published live on iTunes and every other podcast player on Sunday evening. But what we also do is the other six days of the week, we republish our best of shows. So you get shows seven days a week, and then on Sunday night are the new episodes that come out. Um, and a lot of cool guests coming up. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the, the content that we're putting out. Uh, and it's all sort of wrapped around this idea of building a foundation for your health, uh, taking care of yourself, and building an environment in which it sustains your health, right? This super simple, super easy things to do. Uh, but like a lot of people say, that our health is just a manifestation of the environment we live in. And so we'll talk about that with Jason Prawl. Uh, like I mentioned before, he's the guy behind the Human Longevity film. Uh, he's an optimal health practitioner. He works with people uh, around the world. And he's a nationally recognized speaker, and he's the host of the You Optimize radio program. And I'm curious if he's still doing that. And so he's got a new um, summit coming up that we're going to talk about. But Jason, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. Good to see you again. Likewise, likewise. Are you still doing the radio show? Uh, I'm not. No, I, I traded that in for a few other things, um, although I'll be probably launching something very soon. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Is that aside from the summit that we're going to talk about? Yep. Yep. Ah, cool. You got a lot going on. And so you, you were mentioning before we started recording that, uh, <laughs> like most of us, cause you know, you do a lot of traveling for your, you know, you know, the kind of work you do and, and you've been grounded for a while, huh? Yeah. It's, uh, it's been a very interesting 18 months. I, you know, <laughs> I, the last thing I thought would happen was they shut down the world, world travel. So, uh, kind of threw us for a loop and, and, um, like, like most people, we had to pivot and figure out what, how we're going to work our way through this and, and find alignment, uh, despite the uncertain circumstances. Yeah, I know it's been, it's been crazy. So with the human longevity film, how many countries did you go to for that? Yeah, we, we visited, uh, I think seven or eight countries, um, and spoke with people from a variety of different lineages and backgrounds and, um, and, and really discovered kind of the essence for what kept them healthy. And, and, and a lot of it came back down to the way that life was 60, 70, 80 years ago, not necessarily what they're doing today, which everybody loves to focus on. What is the 100 year old eating and what is the 100 year old doing? Right. But the deeper questions are what were their grandparents doing? What were their parents doing? Uh, what were they, they, what was life like when they were seven years old and 10 years old? Right. Those are more important questions than what does the 95 year old eat for breakfast? Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad that you did all that before this, this whole thing happened? Cause that would just, sh you know, shut this, shut that down. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, that's, that's kind of what happened. <laughs> we're actually in the, in the midst of our next film series, which is exploring indigenous and ancient, uh, cultures and wisdoms around the world. So we were before the, the world got shut down, we were, we went to Nepal and, and we're in the Himalayas working with some Buddhist and bone healers, uh, up there. And we went to India to work with an Ayurvedic master. We went to Peru to work with a, uh, a Wachumero, which is, uh, somebody who practices with San Pedro. Um, mm -hmm. and as well as other, uh, practices that, 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 that they might have learned from their lineage. So we were, we were exploring some pretty cool things. We were set to go to New Zealand to work with the Maori, mm -hmm. um, as well as another sort of shaman or, or botanist in Colombia that works primarily with Yahe or, or ayahuasca. Uh -huh. So, um, so this is a really exciting film project that we're, we're still creating, but we're kind of waiting for things to kind of open up again and, um, and looking for the essence of of what they believe to be the source of healing and the source of what we might call disease. 
Yeah, it's, it's also interesting that the majority of people in America, or I should say at least in Western com countries, all have that mindset, like what you just said, like what does this person eat? But it's so much deeper than that, right? It's not just what they eat, but it's it's everything, right? It's a lot of yep. things. Yeah, it, it, it's we are in the West very conditioned to look outward to solve our problems, right? If I've got something that's that's wrong, whether it's mental, emotional, physical, an ailment, a problem I want to solve, it's mm -hmm. it's looking toward our external environment, and and that's it, and and that's a and that's a good. We need to consider that, no question. Like the, mm -hmm. the external environment and external circumstances are a huge factor in what, what's playing out in our lives. The thing that we're often missing is that is the internal environment. We, we forget that the internal environment is actually what is creating the external environment, right? Both individually and collectively. You, 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 can, you can see this by just going around and traveling. Go look at different cultures, different villages around the world. Why are they behaving differently? Why is there um, a different pace? Why is their food different? Why, do, why is the entire situation and feel of a place different? It's not because there's something so unique about the geography. Rather, it's the people and their internal environment, their cultural heritage that is expressing and, and manifesting as this outward external environment. And so do, this is what we really need to consider is that internal environment. Do you think, I wonder if there's a connection between like an internal environment and an external environment in the sense that like, let's say there's some sort of engram or emotional trauma going on with someone, right? And would it be possible to create, to have an external or an internal environment that would attract living in an external environment that's say toxic? Like, let's say, you know how certain people, maybe they, uh, maybe the external cause of their disease totally. is, is, is really like, I live right next to a cell tower or something, but some internal aspect of their nature was drawn to live there before they knew the toxic effects of that. But it all stems from what you said, where it's like really an internal thing. If the further you go back, it really does start with the internal, right? Totally. And, and you're hitting on something really, really valuable. And it's very interesting to consider. And there's a lot here that I want to express. One is, and, and a, maybe an, a more obvious one, that some of us, we get drawn to New York City, right? Because we love the fast paced environment. Now, that type of stimulation is not particularly healthy for long-term health, right? And yet there's something that draws us in, right? There's something about that, like that pace and that, that excitement that, that it stimulates us to want to live there for some of us. Now that is really just feeding, um, an existing state that's already there. In other words, we're more conditioned. We're more familiar with this super fast pace. I'm talking about energetics inside the body, a more high stress environment that we can actually get conditioned to that to where that feels safer than than rest than ease than 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 a parasympathetic state in the body so and, and we're many of us are like this i'm actually wired this way more more fast paced internally and so the medicine for me is slow pace it's the yin yogas it's um decaf coffee right it's, uh, it's, it's, it's less mental stimulation. It's a slower paced life. That's my medicine, even though my conditioned reality, uh, up into adulthood was enjoying that the hard, fast stimulation. So we, we generally are comfortable in these certain environments that we're used to that we've figured out how to survive in. And yet that may not be the, the medicine for us, right? So, same thing on the other side of the spectrum. Many of us uh, are, are more conditioned to be in a sort of complacent, um, slow, non-moving non environment, non-mental environment. And what we need is actually more stimulation. We need more movement. We need more activity, uh, mental, emotional, physical stimulation. We need to get things moving. So we can get conditioned to, to these, these energies inside, and that's going to then often attract us to this sort of likeness on the outside. Now, the deeper thing that you're pointing to, which I think is, is really important, which is that we get drawn into environments that actually can stir us up, that can actually create more problems in our life for a lot of reasons. And it was similar to what I alluded to, which is that we, it was many of us, when we feel safety, when we feel ease in the body, there's actually something that goes, this isn't safe. This is energetics. And this is, I work with people on this very same thing. I've had a lot of work done on my own system. And when we get into this, we can actually touch this place of, of sort of ease and softness. 
And there's like an alarm bell that goes off in your nervous system and goes, this is not safe. Get out of here. Let's think of something. Let's do something and let's move. And so many of us in the West are, are like this, where it can be very, very uh, unsafe to just sit and be. Uh, because that in our childhood typically is where, where it originates. We learned that, that it wasn't a safe thing to do, it was, was to relax. We always had to be on guard. We always had to be monitoring our environment because it felt unsafe. And so we can actually prefer those, those states and those environments. You've seen, I mean, we all have friends or colleagues or people that we know that their life is just, a, that just madness. It's pure chaos. It's like mm -hmm. as soon as one problem is solved, there's something else right around the corner and it doesn't, it's not seemingly their fault. It can be their, their dog just got sick and then their wife is now sick and then this thing's happening to them and then this thing over here falls apart and then their car breaks down. It's like this, these are things that, that are energetically tied to us. And so um, not to say that we have to take responsibility for everything that's happening. These are just patterns to notice. And, and it's interesting to, to know that I see some of my friends, colleagues, people that I'm aware of, and like their life literally is so smooth. And then I have others that are, everything's always falling apart. I kind of tend to be somewhat in the middle, but this is a reality that we can witness. Yeah, it's it's also fascinating to me because I wonder if there's like um, an aspect of our spiritual journey, you know, in this life. And so like, let's right. say, for example, uh, you know, I need to come into this life in order to learn a certain lesson and maybe being diagnosed with a C word uh, is, is a way for me to do that. And so on a weird sort of subconscious level you attract an environment to live in that is going to be incredibly damaging for you so that you can learn this spiritual lesson. Um, totally. And so what's interesting, though, is, is it possible to sort of be in touch with your spirituality to the extent that you can learn lessons without having to be, you know, knocked over the head? You yeah, know? yeah. I wonder this that. Is, <laughs> well, I, I think the answer is yes. And, and it's just a matter of how many times, I guess, we have to get knocked over the head, right? Because the, as sort of we know from, from Buddhists and, and many other cultures as well, suffering is just an inherent part of life. Now, mm -hmm. pain is different than suffering, right? So pain, you can't get away from. There will always be pain. Pain is a part of life, but we don't have to suffer forever, right? The suffering can end. And so, you know, there's a, my shaman friend from Peru, Puma, he, he, he told me one time when I, when I was down there, he said, um, I, I said, I was talking about something. I said, oh, that's just, maybe that's just my, my reality or my, my idea or whatever. And he said, right. he said to me that it's not yours. It's for you. In other words, you don't own anything. You don't own your pain. You don't own your disease. You don't own, you literally don't own anything. You don't own your house. You don't own your body. Nothing is owned but yet it is all for you. This includes our pain, our struggles, our processes, right? And, and if we can just think about it in terms of a process, then, then all the other stuff can just, can, can let go, right? It doesn't have to be, and we can think about karma, we can think about spiritual lessons and, and these type of things. And, and I, this is how I think about them too. I think it's easier just to think of them as a process. And processes, they have, they have an arc, they have a story arc, and they mm -hmm. can be short, they can be long, they can be hard, they can be easy, they can be full of suffering or lack suffering. And, and it's really just a process. So, so can we make our process easier? That's the big question. Yeah, I know. And this idea that you're just talking about not owning things is really fascinating, really, really fascinating because you start looking at different aspects of your own life and, you know, uh, you realize like that emotion or that anger I have, it's totally. not really me, right? It's, it's totally, that, that's yeah. exactly it. And so if we can start to disconnect, if we can start to disown these things and rather just witness them, experience them, to be honest, honor them. Even the, the suffering, the sadness, the, the confusion, the, the anger, right? The, the rage. I mean, these things are emotions, they're energies, they're natural um, interactions that we have with our environment. And, and ironically, the more sort of spiritual or, or self-work that you can do, I shouldn't say spiritual, it's actually embodied practice. But the, mm -hmm. the more we can embody uh, and, and get to be really familiar with these emotions, then what we realize is that they've just been stuck at some point we we didn't have the resource because look when we're born up until essentially in our 20s we have a developing nervous system when we're two and three and four look i have a two-year-old right now justin i know you got kids as well mm -hmm. they they're they're incomplete as 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 functioning humans 
right? We, we literally don't have a nervous system. We don't have the prefrontal cortex developed. So we don't have the logic. We don't have the rationale. We can't understand cer certain things. I watch my two-year-old completely lose his mind over nothing, <laughs> nothing, right. right? It makes zero sense, yeah. but he doesn't understand. He, all he is feeling is the emotions that are coming through and he's expressing them. So they're actually moving through. So my job as a parent is to actually provide resource for him so that when these difficult emotions come through, he, he can use my nervous system actually to help modulate his own system. So he doesn't have to freak out. Right. And this is what we do as parents is that when we, when mom breastfeeds, when it, as a parent, we hold our, we hug our kids, or we just, we literally just provide that energetic attunement for them. Their system actually starts to ping ours, much like a tuning fork that, uh, you know, when uh, you bring a tuning fork and one's a C and another one's a C, the, the one that didn't get hit is actually going to start ringing, right? It's going to start resonating with the other one that's in vibration. This is exactly mm -hmm. what our nervous systems do. And so our kids actually are picking up our nervous system. Systems. So if you have a parent that's that doesn't feel safe because of uh, any variety of reasons, financial stress, divorce, foreclosure, the C word, all these things that are going on in the environment, and we're, we're, we're feeling that in our system, even on a very, very subtle level, we don't even totally recognize it, but it's there. Our kids are picking up on that. Other people are picking up on that. Pets are even picking up on that, right? So, so we're actually vibrating at, at, at these at, because of these sort of emotions and they can get stuck in the system so as an adult as a child when an emotion when it gets stuck when a feeling gets stuck when an experience gets stuck and we're unable to process because we have an underdeveloped nervous system then that's going to live there in our system we're going to develop essentially we're going to split off a little personality a little strategy a little way to deal with it because we don't have the actual physical resource to process it through and integrate it. Mm -hmm. So now we've got to create a, a new strategy and it's brilliant. We are, we're amazing at this. This is what creates our uh, really, really industrious workers, our Steve Jobs of the world, our Gary Vaynerchuk's of the world, right? Like mm -hmm. these people that are doing amazing things, they have these personalities that are tied to their, their, their natural gifts and their natural essences, but they are personalities that have been fractured because of a early experience, perhaps dozens or hundreds of experiences that have conditioned us. And this process, um, this, this emotion or this experience doesn't get processed. So we, we adapt now that's creating all kinds of patterns in our life. The key that, that, that if, if we want to move through these things is we, we need to be able to provide resource either for ourselves or from somebody else. Usually another, another person can help you even as an adult. And this is what I've done thousands of, of hours of therapy on this, where somebody actually, somebody else is actually helping me process on a somatic, on a nervous system level, experiences, emotions, beliefs, thoughts that are stuck in my system. And as they move through that, it's really uncomfortable, right? Like a, a, like this feeling of rage or disappointment or, um, frustration or resentment, they can get stuck and we can actually start to feel those. And, and at first when, when we have enough resource to start to process this, it, it feels uncomfortable. You're like, get, get me out of here. I don't want to do this. In fact, we, our natural strategies come into play, whether it be thought-based realities or we, we start to get distracted or what have you, because we don't mm -hmm. want to feel these things. Cause what last time we felt these things when we were three or six or four or whatever, mm -hmm. it, it was unbearable. It felt like death because we didn't have the resource to process. So now we're feeling it again and we're like, Oh God, Oh no, no, no. And it can be <laughs> scary, but then, you know, as it moves through, typically we, we see crying or yawning or some kind of purge, so to speak, of, of actually moving it through the system. And even these emotions and these experiences that are anger and rage and disappointment and frustration and all the sadness, they can actually be pleasurable, right? So this is a very interesting um, paradox is that we typically label these things as, as negative, right? When nobody wants to feel sadness or feel anger or feel, but actually you, you you actually do want to feel it. Not only do you want to feel it because that's how you process it, but, but there can actually be a joy and appreciation for those emotions. Mm -hmm. And that's what you realize at the, as we become more integrated, more whole as a being, then there is no distinction between these emotions. They're just all cool emotions that we get to experience, right? So, so they all have pleasure with buried underneath them within them at their core. So then the, it seems like the idea is to not shun emotion and just be like a robot, but it's to allow the emotions to sort of move through you without being obstructed and then getting stuck. Like if you were to totally. pour water through a tube or something, if the, all the water goes through the tube, then that's the tube served this purpose. And that's the idea with the emotions, right? Not to get too attached to them. 
Totally, totally, exactly. And, and you're, you're naming it perfectly because as infants, as children, we we don't know that we're separate from the emotion. We're just feeling this emotion. And that can uh -huh. carry with us through a, an, as, to, as adults. This is why we don't want to feel them. This is why even as adults, we still have these guards, these barriers, these, these closed off hearts and, and these strategies to mm -hmm. prevent us from feeling these very, very horrific emotions is, is what it feels like. As we get better at that, as we do that more and more, and we, we get more practiced at it, so to speak, then we can actually start getting some distance from the emotions. We can stop becoming the emotion themselves, mm -hmm. right? If you've ever been sucked into an emotion, it's like the emotion consumes you, right? If mm -hmm. somebody's passed away or something really tragic or, or hard, you have a hard process that you're going through, it literally feels like you contract around the emotion, like you are that fear or that anger or that disappointment or sadness or what have you. And, and it just feels like that's, that's all there is. There is no separation between you and the emotion. Mm -hmm. As we get better at this, as we start to get more practice, we can actually gain distance separation from the emotion to where we can actually feel it move through our system, our body, and we have a, a higher level of awareness sort of watching it happen. And actually not, not more than watching, we're actually facilitating it, so to speak. We're actually, um, we're, 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 we're working with it such that the natural intelligence that is within our body, that is within our mind, that is within our essence can actually do its thing. So there, there, there's, there's a detachment and, a, and an opening out as opposed to a constriction and holding on to. So this is interesting because we've done a number of shows on this from like family constellation therapy and mm, recall powerful. healing and stuff like that. Um, so when you have a lot of these, I don't know if you want to, you know, would call them micro traumas or just maybe mm -hmm. situations like you mentioned, you know, they could be just moderate, you know, but they happen all throughout your life and sort of shapes who you are. If yes. those emotions don't get sort of processed and able to be, I guess, detoxified, um, are they what eventually cause diseases later on in life? Do you think? Totally. Yeah, yeah, totally. In fact, Ayurveda touches on this very, this very thing. And, and in Ayurveda, there's two concepts that are really important. One is called ama, which is basically the, it's like a morbid, toxic metabolic waste, so to speak. Um, and, and the other is called agni or it's spelled agni, but it's pronounced agni. So this agni is the ability to digest, right? And, and these are concepts, right? Ayurveda, is, it's, it's more of a conceptual framework. It's not so quite so literal as we think of in the West. So if you don't have the ability to digest things, then you get this toxic waste, this metabolic waste. This is, this is not only food, right? Because if you're unable to digest food, we know what happens. It's all kinds of, of leaky gut, right? If we think about the Western paradigm, right? And we have this lipopolysaccharides, we have all these, these things that, that happen and disrupts the liver and, and the gut associated lymphatic tissue. And we get all this digestive issues that, that show up because we can't digest food properly. Same thing with emotions, same thing with thoughts. If we're unable to digest thoughts and emotions, we also get ama. And this ama actually shows up first as mental ama or emotional ama, but it ultimately manifests as physical ama. We still get metabolic waste. And this is why in Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, they talk about uh, certain emotions being stored in, in various organs and tissues, right? So the liver is the home of frustration, anger, right? The, the bladder is, is fear, the lungs are grief, right? So w this is where we tend to see this ama show up, this, this metabolic waste. And, and it's really a, this is a deep science, right? So I don't want to pretend to sort of shortcut Ayurveda and Chinese medicine here, but, but yes, that's how these things ultimately work, right? Even Western science is, is familiar enough to say that when we're stressed out, we see that the uh, certain organs work more, right? Like you have the, the adrenal glands and the hypothalamus and the thyroid, and you, you generally have that axis that, that gets disrupted, right? But it's, it's much, much deeper. And so, so we really want to learn how to digest these things. That, that is a critical piece to this whole puzzle. Yeah, it's, it's also fascinating. So when you were traveling around the world doing the Human Longevity Summit um, or a film, did you notice that people from around the world were much more connected to, uh, to all of this type of information mm -hmm. or the, at least the people that live longer were? Yeah, you know, they didn't, they didn't understand things from a sort of Western psychology, right? Like that's where more, more of my training was, was kind of the Western psychological 
um, background and framework and then and through Ayurveda, they had a much more intuitive sense for things. And the thing is, is that the, the people that we spoke with that were in their 80s, 90s, 100s, they grew up in a time where electricity wasn't a thing, where cars weren't around. And so they lived in a more village lifestyle. Now in a village structure, right, we, we, we are dependent on one another. We, we, you, you have to be, you can't make it alone, right? We pride mm -hmm. ourselves in the West on, on sort of doing things all alone. How many of us know our neighbors? We may know their name, but we don't really know them. We're definitely not reliant on them for things, right? right. So, so we have a totally different level of reality in our physical environment. And so they, they had a, a deeper support structure in terms of their family. So they had deeper support and deeper connection. So support is a critical, critical aspect. Many of us, even even in, in, as children, we don't have the support that we're, what we really need. And this is support, not, this isn't just financial support. This is emotional support. This is, um, I mean, breastfeeding. We often, because of the way society is structured, we're not breastfeeding for very long, sometimes not even three months. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, women can't breastfeed, all. right? It's not, they can't, the, the baby doesn't latch. There's all kinds of issues. So we have, and this is, this is, this is an out, um, this is, this stems from the way that we've set up our society. This is not natural. This is not what other people do throughout the world. And this is definitely not what history has shown us. So we've lost a lot of that societal structure in the family, as well as in sort of the village. And so when you have that support network, when you have that, those deeper connections, there's, there's parts of your system from a child development standpoint, those are fundamental, um, uh, aspects of who we are. And this is why, in my opinion, that so many of us in the West are looking toward the government uh, for uh, basically as daddy and mommy, right? Mm -hmm. we, we actually, ha we, we haven't grown up from a psychological developmental standpoint. We, we haven't fully processed these things. Um, we haven't matured. And I, and I don't, I'm not, not casting that blame outward. I'm actually saying that's me too. Um, there's a lot of development developmental work that I've had to do to even understand that, let mm. alone, um, work with it. Right. Because we just, so many of us don't have those, those structures in place to have that developmental growth. And so we have to go reparent ourselves. It both me reparenting myself as well as uh, utilizing other practitioners and sort of therapists, so to speak, that, that understand how to do this. And, and, and it, it's not a talk therapy that I'm talking about, right? You mentioned some of it, which is family constellation. That's a fantastic modality to actually start to work some of these pieces in, in the family structure that can aid in our development. And, and the development that I'm speaking of is not one that needs to be taught. It's mm -hmm. one that naturally happens when the energy and the support is there right? We have an intelligence. We don't have to teach a, a baby to grow. We don't have to teach a, uh, a, you know, a carrot to grow. It mm -hmm. naturally happens. The biological programs and processes are in place. We just need to provide the support structure and, and the natural energies so that the system can, can, can do its thing. And, and that's what we're missing. We're missing that as, as adults and we're missing that as kids. And, and in order to unwind this sort of paradigm that we're in, we're going to have to go back and do some growing up. Ken Wilber talks a lot about this idea of waking up, which is kind of the spiritual waking up mm -hmm. that has to do with different levels of mind and awareness and then growing up, right? And this growing up is the developmental process that, that we need to go back and, and assist because it's, it's stunted, it's retarded. And we actually have to go back there and, and allow it to, to, to fully, uh, to fully grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love Ken's work. He's cool. He's, uh, yeah, he's got some great books. What what made you interested in longevity to go out and to do a documentary like this to travel all around the world? Like, what made you like interested to do this? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it stemmed from me working with a lot of people and in, in, in terms of their ailments, right? Autoimmune uh -huh. conditions, skin issues, hormonal challenges, you name it, like cancer. It all walked in, and and I, I found that I was teaching the same fundamental principles to each one of the people that I was working with. Mm -hmm. And, and it, and it had to do with, um, following the rhythms of nature, for example, right? The light dart cycle. We hear a lot about this now in the circadian rhythm and, 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 uh, the sort of idea that light is, is something you sort of diet on, so to speak, um, as mm -hmm. well as the darkness. We need both of those things. Um, but there's, there's, there's a lot of other rhythms of nature that, that we really need to look at too, but it's following those fundamental aspects of nature and then also following your own individual constitution. So I was having to teach people essentially how to live because it wasn't really 
taught to them, right? I mean, even people right now, we, we go to doctors and, and we think, okay, what supplement do I need? What, what pharmaceutical drug do I need? Mm-hmm. What's this thing that I need? What kind of exercise do I need? What's more fundamental than that? How do I structure my day? What, what are the things that I can incorporate into my day to, to build health? And how, what are the things that I can do away with that are taking away from my health, right? And so that's what I was continually having to teach this people over and over and over again. So I thought, mm-hmm. well, let me go do this film and, and use that as a way to, to do the teaching that I was already doing. And I get to travel the world, which is really fun. And I get to talk <laughs> to these people and, and gain some wisdoms because, I mean, yeah. one of the things that, that sort of disappoints me about our culture <clears throat> is that we don't have the elders, right? almost every indigenous culture around the world has elders that are the, that are the foundational pillar of their culture, of their society. They hold the wisdom, they hold the traditions, they, they know about life and they can pass it along. And, and we just don't have that, right? I mean, I, I don't have that personally. I don't see a lot of it, um, in, in the culture by and large. And so that was just an exciting thing for me to go and, and get that from around the world and, and really, really learn, um, the wisdoms that these people carry because they weren't educated like we would think of, but yet some of the things that they were telling me, like, like I remember one guy, Orestes in Greece, he's, he was 98 and he said, you know, the problem I see is that, um, when I was young, the, the, the body was busy and the mind was still. Now what I see is the body is still and the mind is busy. Oh. And I thought, wow, like break it all down. And like, that's a fundamental that's a huge part of the problem. Wow. Yeah, that's so, so interesting. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. Um, I'll put links to Jason's website. We're going to take a little break right now at extremehealthradio.com slash 712. Uh, his website is Human Longevity Film, and I would really recommend going there and uh, checking out what he's got going on. And when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about his new project coming up, which is um, all about immunity. So that's going to be really cool. Um, again, if you like this show, pass it on to your friends, get the word out, and help people uh, understand you know, and become more familiar with Jason's work. Um, so I want to tell you really quickly about one of the favorite products that I use almost on a daily basis and, and you know, talk about habits and things. Um, this is a little clip from our biological dentist, Dr. Stuart Nunley uh, in Marble Falls, Texas. Um, if you guys are in the market for a biological dentist, he is the best, healthysmilesforlife.com. But for a lot of years, he was removing people's mercury amalgam fillings with no protection. This is before he sort of woke up and he had some really severe neurological damage as a result of that. And that was part of his process of waking up, but he thought he had Lou Gehrig's disease. And so um, here's a little clip of him talking about how he detoxed um, from that and recover from that. Uh, You know what (laughs) I chose to do? I chose to go very, very slow as I detox. So one of the things that I did is I invested in an infrared sauna, which was huge. That was a big, big part of my healing because interestingly enough, many times patients who have heavy metal toxicity lose the ability to sweat. And so I, and I was one of those, I could not break a sweat. And the infrared sauna helped me to retrain my body to be able to sweat. It was a huge part of my overall detox. Doesn't Hal Huggins, Dr. Huggins say, as long as there's more going out than what's coming in, you're okay? Absolutely. (laughs) And I think he's right. I think he's uh, absolutely right on that. Yeah, you know, with, you know, 60,000 chemicals in commerce since the early 1960s and, you know, chemicals in our air, food, and water. I mean, there's just no way to live, you know, and mitigate all of that. So like what Jason was talking about a minute ago, it's just building a lifestyle habit, building things that you do in your day. And um, I'm, I would imagine Jason sweats as well. And, you know, it's just a really great habit to get into that's been used for thousands of years around the world for this particular purpose. Um, and it's really, really great. So the sauna that we recommend is called the Relax Far and Fred Sauna. And it's in our store. I'll put links to it again on this show page, extremehealthradio.com slash 712. But this thing is awesome. It uses far infrared heat. Uh, it is portable, so you can you know store it underneath your bed if you don't have a lot of space, or you can let a family member borrow it. Um, it's low EMF. It's your head sticks out, so from an Ayurvedic perspective, uh, it's good in that sense because you don't want to heat up your your brain and your head, uh, which means you can watch documentaries and stuff, which is what I do when I'm in the sauna, and time goes by really really quickly, and you sweat like just a ton. I mean, gosh, I put some stuff on our Instagram recently. <laughs> it's like amazing. Um, so anyway, that will be available at extremehealthradio.com slash 712. I'll put a link to that. And then here's a little clip from my friend, uh, Ken Rolla, talking about dirty electricity. And talk about like, 
environmental, gosh, uh, like toxins and things that we are exposed to in our environment today that was not around, you know, a uh, 100, 200 years ago, it's a uh, dirty electricity in our walls. Check out Ken talking about that. Dirty electricity, what that does and what it is actually for people that aren't aware is when, you know, when the power company is generating electricity and sending it to you, they don't have a constantly perfect steady supply of 120 volt, 60 hertz electricity pulsing to you perfectly every time. It fluctuates quite a bit. And if you put meters on it, you can see it'll fluctuate. And so that fluctuation, and there are micro fluctuations as well, and those micro fluctuations, all that fluctuation creates these pulses in the wiring that will create EMF pulses around you. I mean, the wires themselves, when electricity is flowing through them, that will create a field around the wires that can affect you. But then when you've got all that little pulsing and micro pulsing going on, it's creating these frequencies of fields that are pulsing and affecting you negatively. And so those devices like the green wave, they will act like an inductor and smooth that signal out so you don't get all that, all those, that pulsing. And then my devices, because of the skater fields, they will structure the EMF coming off of the wires in your house and everything mm -hmm. else uh, mm -hmm. as well. I use those, uh, I use Stetzer filters and green wave. I got both. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I, I try to recommend a lot of people to do or everyone to do is is instead of focusing on your diet and your even your habits, you know, it's really difficult to get into the habit or discipline of working out or doing these types of things you know are good for you. Focus on like the passive things that you can do in your environment to help make that environment not toxic, you know? So we had Professor Martin Paul on the show a while back and he was talking about the cell membrane and how these magnetic and electric fields that are coming off of our, the wiring in our house, uh, these things are affecting the cell membrane. And then as a result of that, uh, calcium and iron flood the inside of the cell and he's cross-referenced dozens of different diseases as a result of that. Um, and that's all because like the house that we live in, if you were to remove the drywall, you were to remove the, all the stucco and everything from our home and just leave the wires, you would quickly realize that you're living in an electrified cage and we're living in an electrified grid. Uh, and so this is having a profound impact on our health. You know, Magda Habas was on the show talking about uh, blood sugar levels and cancer, you know, as a result of this non-native EMF. Um, and that's just simply dirty electricity coming off of the wiring in our walls. So an easy way to mitigate that is just get some of these green wave filters. They're like 30 bucks and you can put them, you know, in your bedroom, you can put them in your office, in your kid's room, and just to step down that magnetic and electric fields that are being uh, caused, uh, you know, affecting our biology for 30 bucks, you know, so what we do is we just buy one every now and then. Um, some people buy a whole house kit, you know, like 15 of them at once, uh, but we just buy them every now and then and we just put them in different areas of the home and sometimes we move them if we have to, uh, if we don't have enough. So it's a really great investment in your health. They're called the Green Wave Dirty Electricity Filters. I'll put a link to it at extremehealthradio.com slash 71. Two and let's bring Jason back on the show. There we go. Yeah, Jason. So it's interesting, you know, like um, one of the things that I would imagine that people that you talk to, they live in these pristine environments, right? Where they're getting access to spring water and they're getting access to different fields. They're living closer to nature. They're not living in these electrified cages. <laughs> you know, it's exactly. crazy we do that. Yeah. Well, well, and 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 that's 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 totally true. Um, and the other part of that is, is that we're subjecting ourselves to toxins, right? Like in the foods that we eat. I mean, look, I preach and teach this stuff and I don't think I've gone an entire month where I haven't, we haven't eaten any, any processed food at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. There's something I've eaten that's processed. Hopefully it's organic and it's, it's as simple as possible, but I mean, the people that we were talking to, they were 80, 90, 100, they grew up in a time where processed food, I mean, beyond bread and cheese and your sort of basic processing of food and, and making your own wine, they didn't have these industrial processes flown from around the world, right? So the, the, the level of simplicity um, was, is hard to imagine for, for us. It's hard to imagine. So yeah, you're right. I mean, the, 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 the chemicals and the metals, I mean, they've been exposed to them for the last 20 years uh, for, for sure, because of just the way the, the air currents and, and things get, get moved around. But, but for example, in Greece, 
you know, in the island of Icaria, they, they, it's a mountainous island. It's a very rocky terrain. Mm -hmm. And they've, they have um, amazing honey there. Actually, they're, they're renowned for their honey. And, and part of the interesting thing that is a result of that unique environment is that um, because of the rocky terrain and because of the small island and in the small village community, they don't have monoculture. So they don't have these large crops that, that are conducive toward chemical fertilizers. So mm. because they don't have mono, monoculture, there's no way that, that, that uh, GMO seeds or, or any kind of uh, fertilizers and chemicals were used um, in any of the food. And so therefore, not only is the food and the soil in good shape, but the bees uh, and the honey is in really good shape, right? So some of this is sort of like, you could say luck, but it's just the reality of their environment. But even so, like uh, the farmers in Costa Rica, they, they turned down Monsanto's um, offer to give them free seeds and they were hip to the game. They knew, wow, they knew that nature cool. was the way to go. So yeah, they, they're just, they understand they're more in touch. And when you're more in touch with nature, your, your intuition increases, your ability to sense the truth improves, your ability to detect temperature and light and these little subtle aspects of food and, and your hunger and, and all these different things starts to raise. We start to become really, really in tune on to the subtle levels of reality. And that's where I think we find ourselves in the West is we've, we've so dis disrupted that ability to sense the subtle aspect of who we are and what is my body saying? What's my body needing? I mean, there was a beekeeper in, in Ikaria and he said, he said, I've been stung thousands of thousands of times. He said, but this is why you never see any beekeepers with arthritis. So he knew he didn't need Western research to tell him that, that bee sting therapy is helpful for rheumatism. Right, you know, he, right. he just knew that. Right. So, so again, these are the, these are the things that when you have that level of reality and you understand, you understand that, yeah, getting sting, getting stung doesn't necessarily feel good. It's a pain, but it doesn't have to cause suffering and it can actually be helpful in the long term for improved uh, immunity uh, at the, at the basic level. Yeah. It's interesting because what you talk about in terms of being in connection to yourself and in, in connection with nature is so interesting because one of the most frustrating things that I sort of deal with is when people will email in and they'll ask me questions about what, like you said before, what supplement should I take? Or, you know, mm -hmm. this doctor says this and another guest you had said that, you know, and they get all angry about things like that. Yeah. And I, and I feel like it's one of those things where when you do what you just talked about and you're in connection with nature and you're in connection with yourself, you can say, okay, right now I resonate with this person, a little bit of that person and my own truth as well. And I'm going to come up with a solution that works for me instead of fighting with people saying, Oh, Dr. Mercola says this and Dr. Furman says this and Dr. So-and-so says that, you know, it, I think we've lost that ability to say, what do I think, <laughs> Totally, you know, well, what do and, I think and, about this? And, and you're a hundred percent right. And, and again, it, there's a, there's deep, deep reasons why, and some of it gets back to what we talked about earlier, which is actually the child developmental process. All of us go through this process. If we go through the developmental process, there's actually a point in our, in our development, um, where we start to determine who I am. I am me. I am not this, this other person here. I have my own sort of individuated aspect of reality here. And, and I have preferences and I have, um, things that are good for me, et cetera. And, and there's a level of discernment. There's a level of my alignment, who I am, what's really good for me. What do I really need in this moment? Right. That's actually a developmental stage that if it gets, if we go through that properly and fully, then we have a better, we're better able to discern um, for ourselves, what's good, what do I really want? And, and all these things, mm -hmm. the other level of, uh, of, of reality here too, is that we are conditioned, right? So you actually mentioned micro traumas earlier, and I, I didn't really comment on that, but I wanted to say something that's really important here, which is that there is micro traumas. And those are, those are, those are critical to understand because they're not something that, that would really draw attention to it. There's also things that we wouldn't even consider traumas, but yet they're conditioned reality. In other words, we get we get displayed certain levels of reality by the people around us, our caretakers, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And that's the level of mind that we grew up with. So if you were always taught that you have to work hard in order to um, find success or to be wealthy, then what's your, what's your reality? Your reality is that if I don't work hard, I'm going to be poor. I'm not going to be successful. I'm not going to reach. I'm not going to be anybody. I'm going to mm -hmm. be nothing. That's not the truth. You, just by being born, you are somebody. You are important. You are you. You already are success. So 
there's, there's, there's conditioned beliefs, there's conditioned levels of thought and ideas. And this is, this is more pervasive than I think we really understand, which is that that conditioning creates your reality. And so this happens in, in a wide variety of areas. And so if we are conditioned to believe that there's an authority figure that knows more about, that can help me more than I can help myself, that I need to listen to the doctor than myself, mm -hmm. then, then, then I'm going to believe that. I'm going to actually give away my power because that's what I've been conditioned to, to do. And this is what most of our society is conditioned to do. This is the way our schooling is set up. This is the way our sort of parenting and, ch and, and, and child rearing is set up as opposed to the parent trying to find out about their child. What does this being want to do? Who is this being? How do I understand what this soul is here to create and, and who, mm -hmm. who he or she is here to be? right? Like there's different ways that we can approach these things. And so if we are able to condition into our young ones or into ourselves as adults, that I am the ultimate authority on me, that nobody else is a, is a better authority on me than me, then I'm going to start looking to myself for the answers. Now that's a very scary place to start because many of us don't have, we don't feel like we know enough. And so, so there is a level of education, sure, that, that, that must be, um, uh, engaged with, right? Mm -hmm. I would point people to Ayurveda. Ayurveda, it's a, it, it seems confusing at first because it's a different set of languages. It's, a, it's you're thinking in the feminine, you're thinking in terms of qualities or what they call gunas. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking in terms of linear reality like we like to paint here in the West, but I'm telling you, it's going to get you so much further into understanding who you are, why you are the way you are, why you have certain patterns expressing the way you are, right? It, it, you mentioned saunas and sweating um, in, in one of the, the ad breaks. Saunas are fantastic. I have an infrared sauna myself. They are a, a huge, huge benefit to health. And there's, 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 there's contextual aspects to it. I am uh, pitta, very fiery. I, I generate a lot of internal heat just by my constitution, just by the way my sort of genetics are set up. So, and because of that, and because I've, I, I have understood that, I actually need to be careful about going into that sauna too often for too long during the summer months, because that's just a recipe for overheating. Whereas somebody else that has a more kapha or cooler or slower paced um, uh, metabolism, so to speak, they can actually be in there longer. It actually may serve them better than mm -hmm. it would me. So we have these different aspects of who we are based on our constitution, based on our genetics, if you will. The genetics and the constitution is there. It can be expressed differently for sure, but, but there are sort of boundaries that we must play in each one of us. And, and that is different for each one of us, right? So, so again, if we start to learn my own constitution, if I understand the laws of nature and the rhythms of nature, then I can understand that sitting in a sauna for me in particular is better in the winter than it is in the summer. It's mm -hmm. better uh, at certain parts of the day than it is at other parts of the day, right? It's, it's, so we can start to learn to work with these things. And again, I think Ayurveda provides a fantastic framework for you to learn about yourself. That's the beautiful part is that it's, it's going to give you these ideas and these frameworks and these, these sort of boundaries to work in. And then you can play with that. So for me, with like food things, right? There are certain foods that I've learned that are really, really good for me. And Ayurveda is the map that has, that has, I've tried a lot of different things. Ayurveda has been the most accurate frame of reference that I can find just in a practical standpoint. So I've tried the paleo stuff and, and the high fat stuff and the Western price stuff and the vegetarian stuff. I've kind of played with all this stuff and, and I found different levels of success. It turns out that you, all those diets I just mentioned, you can actually apply Ayurvedic wisdom. You can do like Ayurvedic paleo, right? You can do an Ayurvedic like, like animal only diet. Yeah. And there's a way to do that. There's an Ayurvedic way to do vegetarianism that would be very successful for the individual. And there's a way to do it that would prove very disruptive. So you hear people all the time, oh, I tried veganism, I tried vegetarianism, I tried pescatarianism, I blah, blah, blah. And it, and it didn't really work for me. Well, okay. Even if you're eating whole organic foods, perhaps you were eating at the wrong time of the day, of day. Perhaps you weren't digesting it properly. Perhaps they were the wrong types of food for your constitution. So there's all these little contextual things, right? And even over the course of a lifetime, you know, the things that I, that are going to do well for me when I'm 18 are very different than, than when I'm 50 or when I'm 80 and, and particularly exercise. 
exercise and food are the two I'm thinking of in particular, mm -hmm. right? I can do different types of exercise when I'm 18, not just because I have the capacity, but actually because they're better for me at 18 than they would be at, at 85, right? Mm -hmm. Our digestion is not as good at 80 or 85. So I need to be start thinking about what foods are easier to digest, right? The rices and the fruits and some of these type of things, right? So, so again, this is the law of nature. This is the life cycle that I'm talking about. And if we can understand our own life cycle, our own constitution, the rhythm of the day, the seasons, then I can start to work with these foods and these exercises and these practices in a way that is cohesive to, to those rhythms, to the, my constitution. And as you start to play with that, you start to recognize not only the things that work for you, but you start to learn about yourself more. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So it's like, we're all trying to fit. That's the, it's the end game. Anyway, that's what we're here to do. We're trying to figure out who the heck we are mm -hmm. and what we are. This is the spiritual awakening that we're all undergoing. We may not think of it that way, but that's really what's happening. And, and everything in our external environment is just a mirror to show us who we really are. And so if we can learn to work with that and, and figure out the individuated aspect of God that I am and how it's being expressed, then not only can I harmonize with that, I can actually learn to accentuate the, the, my, my gifts or my, um, my advantages. That's it. so interesting. Um, I want to ask you about your new project coming up, the, the immunity summit that you're working on. But, um, before that real quickly, cause I know people are listening to you thinking, all right, Ayurvedic sounds interesting. Uh, where would I go to learn more about that? So do you have any quick resources for people on that? Yeah. I mean, you can go to a couple different sources. Life spa is a, is a good resource. Uh, Banyan botanicals is a, is a supplement brand. They have a, a sister site that is provides a lot of good information. The Ayurvedic Institute is run by Dr. Vasant Ladd, a very, very, um, he's like a living master. Actually, he's kind of the guy that brought Ayurveda to the West. Um, there's a lot of places you can start and, and you just start reading and you start to recognize that it's a, a very different way of thinking about things and looking at things. And it's a little confusing because the terminology is something that you're not familiar with, but you understand if I tell you that Pitta is hot and oily and, um, and is all about transformation and digestion, then you already you understand what Pitta is. You don't, there's no, because you understand the qualities, you understand what it's about, right? So, mm. so you're just starting to look to work with the, the qualities of things. And as you start to work with the qualities of things, then you can understand how things are starting to work. You don't have to memorize everything. Um, so, so that's where I would say, go, go check things out there. There's a few books that you can read. Um, you know, anything by Dr. Vasant Ladd is fantastic. Anything by Dr. Robert Svoboda, S-V-O-B-O-D-A. Um, very, very good books. Ayurveda is super deep wisdom. It's super, super deep. I mean, this is, this is tied into yoga. It's tied into very, very deep spiritual practices. Um, it, how do I breathe, right? People talk about breath work as such an important tool for mm -hmm. all of us. Yes. And there's a fire breath. So I've got to be careful being a pitta, fiery, hot person. I got to be careful with the fire breath. Uh, the medicine for me is the cooling breath, mm -hmm. is, the, is the breath that slows my system down, right? So again, once you start to know these things and you start to recognize, oh, there's a, there's a cooling breath. Okay, well, let me do that one. Right. There's a way I can actually calm my system down. That's good for me. So we can start to work with all of these different, there's yoga, there's certain asana, there's certain poses that are, that are heating poses. Those aren't going to be so good for me unless I balance them out with some of the more cooling poses. Yeah. Right. So again, depending on your constitution, depending on if you've got thyroid disorders, there's certain thyroid poses. I mean, there's all, you can start to work with all this stuff. So it's more than just diet. It's more than just exercise. It's how you're breathing. It's how you're interacting. Am I doing too much mental stimulation, right? It's like, there's, there's so many things to consider here. And so it just starts to get easier. I'm telling you this because it provides you a roadmap for how to understand these things. Back to your original question. This person says that this person says this, they're mm -hmm. both right. And they're both wrong, depending on the context, right? So so this is, we've got to be careful about these things because it's not that the expert is incorrect or they don't know what they're talking about. It's just, if applied to the incorrect con context, incorrect situation, it's going to turn out very, very badly. Yeah. And so, so this is, this is how you understand the nuance and how you get to know, okay, yes, he's correct in this circumstance and he's incorrect in that circumstance. So that way I know when to apply this knowledge. And as I apply these things and I start to know myself, then I, then I don't need to rely on these people because I already know myself. I, I know how this stuff operates. I know that if I sit in the sauna for too long, or I know if I eat too much salty foods or mm -hmm. it, is salt dangerous and bad? No, salt is fantastic. These, these amazing mineral salts that we get from around the world are, are so good for you. And 
for somebody like me, if used too often, too frequently, along with some other spicy, pungent foods, like like these peppers and and all these foods that I actually like, coffee, I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not good for me if I if I overdo it and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. so it just it helps you understand that stuff a lot. Yeah, I know it's it's really great to have a framework through which you can apply different principles, like you said before, if someone's vegan totally. or someone's a carnivore, um, having a framework and understanding really how you operate within that framework so that you can apply whatever goals you're trying to do with your diet and lifestyle. It, it helps so much just having that, that framework. Um, yeah. So I want to ask you about your upcoming summit and what you're doing with that, what the goals are for it and how it's going to be released. Cause it's all about super immunity, right? It, yeah. It was actually called awaken the healer within. So it's tied into immunity for sure. It's it's, I would say it's even deeper than that. It's, it's really about kind of some of the stuff we've been talking about. How do I awaken the natural healer that, that is within me, right? When you cut your finger, you don't have to go anywhere. I mean, I, I suppose if it's deep enough, you may need stitches, but, but, but just a little, um, you know, cut on your finger, you, you just let it heal. It, th there's a natural healing wisdom within your body, right? So, so it gets down to the fundamental essence of, of what is health? Where does health come from? It doesn't come from a doctor. It doesn't come from an Ayurvedic practitioner. It doesn't come from anywhere other than inside your own system, inside your body. Your body has the wisdom. So how do we awaken that? How do we how do we turn that on? Why are are there so many so many of us dealing with digestive issues, cancers, autoimmune conditions, um, you name it, diabetes, excess weight? Right? There's real reasons for this. And so how do we awaken that healer within that is that that understands the, the the natural balancing mechanisms and, and how to keep things in a harmonious state. And so we've discussed a handful of these things, but there's, there's so much more and we get into the nuance of some of these things and, and, and get into how we resolve um, some of the things that are preventing that healer from sort of awakening, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So is it going to be released like, uh, you know, how like Ty Bollinger does his truth about cancer? Is it kind of like that kind of model or, yeah. or how do people yeah, consume similar. it? Yeah, similar. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, um, uh, starting October 19th, um, it'll go live for, uh, seven or eight days at this point is, is what we're scheduled to do. So, um, there'll be free content every day and we've got, uh, an amazing lineup of speakers. Um, we've got Marcy Shimoff, um, Zach Bush, Dr. Sue Mortar, Kelly Brogan, uh, Paul Check, um, Sayer G, Pedram Shojai, Dr. Dan Engel. Um, who's into sort of the psychedelic therapies and, and sort of the mm -hmm. newer medicines. So we, we cover a lot of ground, um, talking about a, a, a lot of deeper wisdoms and, and considering some of the, the more subtler, the subtle aspects that are, that are preventing us from healing, right? Why is it that we're, we're continuing to look for, for answers? And we, we take that supplement and we try this diet and we, we go follow the advice of this person and we're still getting stuck. And oftentimes, I think it, it, if anybody is being honest with themselves, who's listening to this, we know when we're doing things that are not good for us. <laughs> we, we, we know it. Yeah, and we do. We, don't, we can't stop, right? <laughs> There's something within us that is preventing us from truly following our alignment to, to, to really listening to what we need and, and, and what's good for us. And, and so there's something preventing us from actually finding that well-being right that's that's very interesting that, that that we have these internal mechanisms that are actually making the process a little bit harder so how what is that how do we how do we unwind that so that those things are not there right if you look around you right now um we have a very chaotic um social environment so there's there's a lot of reasons to be triggered to be angry to be fearful to be upset what have you Mm -hmm. Some, some of us are really, really fearful and really, really angry and frustrated. And some of us aren't. And I, I think it's interesting to watch how that's playing out. Why is it that, that two people in the uh, virtually the exact same circumstance can react totally differently. And this isn't just with the current situation. This is the, at the grocery store, somebody cuts you off in traffic. Why is it that one person blows up and another person doesn't? Right. What's going on there, right? There's the external world is simply providing the trigger or the mirror for what's going on internally. And so, so how do we understand that? How do we, how do we get to the, the root of that such that if we can get that, that, that core thing resolved, then we don't have to trigger. We don't have to get excited about something fearful, angry, even though the anger may be there, it may pass through, but it doesn't, we don't have to lose our center. 
right? Mm -hmm. This is, this is, I think the key. It's like, there are reasons to be mad. There are reasons to stand up. There are reasons to be frustrated and fearful and it's okay. Fear is actually a, a, a very motivating emotion. How do we let those, how do we, how do we experience those without, without kicking us off our center, without losing alignment? And if I can act from a place of alignment instead of a place of fear and, and, and um, imbalance, then I can, I can take more proper action. I can take right action. I can, I can, I can be in a, in a place and, and provide and create a reality around me that is more conducive to what my dream is, to what I really want. And this has to do with finances. This has to do with uh, relationships, romantic relationships, relationship with, ki with kids and parents and, and loved ones. This has to do with every level of reality of creating and, and finding that job that you want, right? These things, people talk about manifesting and, and all this sort of spiritual stuff. It's really not about that. It's actually about your own alignment and resting in your alignment. And if you can rest in that with, without getting sounding too woo woo here, you essentially vibrate, you essentially create a certain level of reality internally that will naturally be reflected externally. Mm -hmm. This is how things just magically come into your life. You don't have to manifest it. You're just sitting in your own alignment and it's coming to you. And this, I've seen it, I've been, I've witnessed to it. it it's, it's happened in my own life. The more work I do in, the, in, this, in this way, the cure starts coming up. The answers start coming to me. The, the money, the jobs, the, the, the opportunities, they just start landing at my doorstep. Mm -hmm. And this isn't all the time I, by, by any stretch. I have a lot of work to do. I'm still have a lot of resistance in my own life and I'm setting up a lot of my own roadblocks. <laughs> and yet the more I do this, the more I see it, the more I, I, I start to watch it unfold, <laughs> the more confirmation I get to continue doing this deeper work. And, and that's really what this summit is about is awakening the healer within. It is foundationally about physical, mental, and emotional health, but it goes so much beyond that because it, it, it again, there is no difference in manifesting, uh, creating, and, and calling in physical health no different than, than, than with finances. It's the same stuff. It's the same energy. And so we can, we can do things from uh, an energy of lack and, and fear and resistance, or we can do them from alignment and, and the outcome is very, very different. Yeah. I love what you're talking about because it's so fundamental to what people are going through. And unfortunately people bring that, um, that Western mindset to, to health and healing. Like this doctor says this, I'll take this supplement. They're just looking to get rid of symptoms or things. But what ultimately I try to impress upon people is that, um, this idea of, of health, it's not really about health at all. It's really about becoming the fullest expression of yourself. And many times it's health. Yes. It sort of lands as a barrier uh, to do that. And so what I, I constantly try to tell people is like, this is an opportunity for growth in, in every area, you know? So once you overcome, say, a particular health challenge you have, then you start realizing, wow, this, that's amazing. I have more power than I thought. Maybe I could get that job I wanted. Maybe I could get that girlfriend or boyfriend, or maybe I can get that raise or whatever. And it's really just a personal development thing more than, than health, but health is a, is a good avenue, right? To that. But yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. What you're speaking to is that sort of life force energy that gets caught up in, in just managing this physical and mental, emotional disease, right? Mm -hmm. Or, or the life force energy that's caught up in just managing my fan finances so that I stay afloat, right? There's so much of our life force energy that is being directed just to keep things going and if mm -hmm. and if we can sort of reclaim some of that right and, and it doesn't have to stay in woo, woo land i'm not talking about awaken the healer within it's not about just letting go of all external realities and um, getting rid of supplements and and saunas and and all these things and just pretending that i can just be this this monk of a healer yeah. <laughs> without doing anything it's about creating an alignment and and resolving some of these these things that are keeping us stuck and and when we do that the right doctor can come in and help us out. Or it may even look like being diagnosed with cancer and now you finally have an answer to what was going on. Now you know what steps to take, right? right? It can look like so many different ways. It can look like divorce, but ultimately finding the strength and the, 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 the willingness to finally create that separation from the person that, that you're not meant to be with any longer. And that provides you a new avenue for for a new level of reality, right? Mm. So it doesn't have to look all fluffy and cute. It can be anything. It can look like anything, but it's really about as we get into our alignment, now the things that are keeping us stuck, they can fall away. 
and, and the things that we're looking for, the answers, the solutions, um, they can start to present themselves, right? Uh, I remember this is sort of a side conversation, but, but I, I remember talking to my friend and he was, he was on and off with his girlfriend and, and he was trying to figure out how do I get her back and how do I make this work and you know, mm -hmm. all these things. And I said, look, the more you stay in limbo with this girl, the more you kind of like back and forth and not really sure what's going on here, then, then that's preventing you from your life partner showing up because she can't show up if you're caught in limbo here. He, he let that, that relationship go. And I think it was a week or two later, his now wife and, and mother of his child uh, showed up. Wow. So these are the things. It's like the job that you're in, right? That you feel like you can't leave because it's providing a stable income and all these stories that we're telling ourselves, right? Which they, they may be some level of true, but they may not. We can upgrade those stories. We can change our story and we can create a new level of reality. If we have the, the bravery or the creativity somehow figuring out how do I leave this job because it's killing me. Mm -hmm. and, and now I can create a different level of reality such that I can, I can have my needs met from a financial level and I can start to pursue my dreams. Right. I mean, Justin, I, I don't know your story totally, but I can't imagine that you came out of high school dreaming about being doing podcasts and living in the health world. And yet somehow you found yourself here. And I imagine mm -hmm. that there, there, there were some twists and turns along the way that that required you to either get creative and or brave in order to take some leaps in order to, to, to get here. Right. And this is kind of the, the story of us all. Once we look back, we can say, oh, that bad thing that happened was mm -hmm. the greatest thing that happened. That that diagnosis, that 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 those the skin issues, that that hormonal challenges, my hair falling out, that divorce, the financial ruin, that, that created an opportunity that, that propelled me to become a better person. That's what we're all in the process of doing right now. No matter what challenge we're facing, it is literally encouraging us, inviting us to look deeper within ourselves. What's really going on here? What's really creating this scenario? And how do I either A, accept this reality and or B, learn to change it, right? And, and I think it can be a combination of both. Sometimes pure acceptance is all that's needed. Mm. And, and sometimes we can say, no, I don't accept this level of reality. I'm gonna change this damn thing. You mm -hmm. know, I have the power, I'm going to do it, right? And we can create intention. And there's so many aspects to changing that reality. It doesn't have to look so mechanical and so trapped in the mental. In fact, I'd say 98% of, of our stuckness is not created from the mental field. So we're not going to solve it from the mental field. We're going to solve it from a different level of reality. And that's generally in the body, in our awareness, um, into deeper le levels of reality. And as we change those, then things start to sh shift without us having to think about it extra hard, so to speak. Mm -hmm. No, that's, man, that's amazing. Wow. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to replay this episode. This will come out this Sunday night, um, but then I'm going to replay it again at the beginning of when your uh, thing launches. It, lo it launches October. What day did you say? Yeah. So the, the promotional period is September 29th is when that opens. So people will start getting notified September 29th, okay. and then it goes live October 19th. So anytime in that sort of first part of October, people can register and, and get notifications that it's going to go live. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Man, is there a is there a like a separate website for it or um or do you have yeah. it as a part of your Yeah, you can one? go to Yeah, you can go to Awaken the Healer Within. Okay. And cool. just Google you can Google that or you can go to awakencollective.com and you can find more about it there. Okay, cool. We'll link it up in the uh, in the show page. All right, one final question for you. It's a beautiful day here in Southern California. Um it's sunny here, so I'm sure it's sunny down there where you are. Uh, what do you got going on the rest of the day? Anything fun, hopefully, Friday? <laughs> hmm. Well, I've got Each. a couple more interviews to do. I've got, okay. I've got a lot to, to, to work on with this summit. I've got to pull that together. So that's still um, going on. But um, no, I have a pretty bland day, actually. I have a pretty bland okay. day. But, cool. but tomorrow's the weekend, <laughs> and so that's when we're going to have some fun. That's awesome. And, um, and how? so you said you're, um, you have a son that's two? Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Our kids are, our twin boys are three. So we're right there with you. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's, lot of fun. It's quite the ride, but they're, they're a beautiful mirror. They're a fantastic training ground for, for our own stuff, you know, Gosh, right. The ultimate mirror, right? <laughs> it is. Yeah. That's the awesome. Ultimate teacher. All right, man. Well, thank you again for being on the show. It, what's interesting is that, um, for those that are listening, he, um, we did episode 610, so almost 100 shows ago with Jason. So um, I'll, wow. I'll link that up too. So yeah. But um, 
Jason, man, thank you again for your work and being on, man. I really appreciate it. It was awesome. All right. Thank you for having me on. And I'm, it's good to, good to see you again. I'm glad you're still doing this. We had a little bit of a break with all this. So I'm, I'm yeah. glad to see you're, you're still moving. Awesome, man. Thank you. And uh, I'll be in touch on, on email and have an awesome day, dude. All right. Take care. All right. Thanks, Jason. All right. There you go, guys. Uh, Jason Prawl, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Wow. Interesting, right? <clears throat> One of the things I talk about a lot is this idea that he just sort of really eloquently described during the show. And I want to share a little bit. We're going to do a little break right now. And I want to share with you, um, for you new listeners that are just listening to our show for the first time, uh, the story of why I got involved in this. Because like he said, I didn't go to high school and college and think, oh, I'm going to be a podcast or a radio show. <laughs> oh, so that was never in my reality. And there's a some traumatic reasons as to why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I hope you enjoyed that show. I'm going to link everything up um, to what he talked about. I also have the, the different Ayurvedic links and stuff like that on today's show. So um, I hope you guys are enjoying everything we have going on. We're going to do a little break right now. And uh, this is my friend Anthony from the Extreme Health Academy. Check this out. This is Anthony from Georgia. And I wanted to talk about how impactful Extreme Health Academy has been since becoming a member. The first thing that came to my mind was community. The forums in Extreme Health Academy allow you to ask questions, get feedback, and it's a place where everybody can come and it's risk-free. Everyone there is genuinely family-oriented to try to get you the best possible help. The next thing was the content. The content and the courses that they've put together are very insightful, they're informative, and allow you to almost go back to school to learn about the body, but also learn about your environment in ways to help you stay and to maintain and to keep being healthy. And the last thing is just the overall change. I've really seen a difference in my overall perspective with health, and it's not just just food, but it's light and it's things around you, it's the wireless. It's, it's a comprehensive support system to really get people to understand that we can take back our health one day at a time. Thank you, Extreme Health Academy, and keep up the good work. Yeah, man, Anthony is a really awesome member, and it's it's one of those things where you get out what you put in, right? So every uh, Friday morning, I'm live, and today we went for an hour and a half before this radio show, and we talked and we commiserated, and I you know shared some support for different aspects of people asking questions, and so we do that as a group every Friday morning, and then twice a month, every other Wednesday, my wife does a women's wellness session, and she's live with the ladies inside the Extreme Health Academy, and then once a month, uh, a month, Dr. Bergman is live on the third Sunday of every month um, for an hour or so, and most of the time, two hours answering questions. And then we have our courses and our live workshops. We're actually going to do a, a, a live workshop here um, on some solutions for uh, this big C, little V um, situations from a legal perspective. So this is going to be really cool. So you can join up on those live workshops. And as you can imagine, as a radio show host and access to people like Jason Prawl and people from around the world, um, I get access to a lot of cool, cool people that are able to do live individual trainings for our members. So not only do we, do we have the courses inside there, but we have live workshops and we have so much going on. It's just so awesome. Uh, we're doing group cleanses. So three times a year we do group cleanses. It's just so much going on. And then in the forums, I think I have like over 4,000 posts. So if you want to work with me directly, you can just at, you know ask me a question in the forums and um, definitely love to help you out there too. So join the Extreme Health Academy if you want to join and check it out and check it out for, uh, for free. A, two, a, a two-week trial, just go to ExtremeHealthAcademy.com and enter the code EHR14, and that'll give you two weeks free. So check that out. And then here's my friend Morley Robbins, and he's one of the more interesting people we've ever had on the show, and I really love his work. But here he is talking about colostrum, but in particular retinol, and how that plays a role in your health. But this colostrum is amazing. So um, check this out, and... Let me know what you think. It's very easy to become overwhelmed in today's society. Oh, there are a thousand reasons why I'm not feeling right. No, there's just a couple. You don't have minerals and you don't have retinol in your diet. And so colostrum, I did not know what its concentration. The first line of the sentence, in 1933, Dan suggested that the calf received from 20 to 50 times as much vitamin A from colostrum as from whole milk. That's an enormous download of retinol. Why is retinol so important? We could spend a month of conversations just 
just talking about retinol alone. But what it's very important for is putting copper inside ceruloplasmin, Mm -hmm. which is the copper protein that runs our body. And so retinol is outrageously important for our immune system, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Then with the red light, the sauna, what is red light? Red light and copper are the same thing. So what you're doing is your sauna is a crutch because there's not enough copper in your body to move the toxins. What moves the lymph system? It's copper. What stops it? Iron. And so the the saunas are great. I I, I mean, I burst out laughing. I hope people didn't see that. But when you (laughs) said, I watch my documentaries when I'm in the sauna, what a great use of your time. What a great healing uh, discipline. There are overlapping dynamics between what you're doing and what I'm talking about. Red light and copper were the same thing. I know if your listeners know that. And that's helping to build an awareness that, man, this copper thing must be really important. Wow, this retinol thing that I'm getting from the colostrum, that must be really important. It is really important. Yeah, so that was a little clip that we put on Instagram. Make sure to follow us on there because we're sharing a lot of really cool stuff on Instagram that I think you guys would appreciate and lots of Instagram stories about what we're doing with our kids and different recipes we're making and the adventures we have as a little family here. So come and join us on Instagram. You'll see us as, uh, our, I think our handle is Extreme Health Radio there. But I, ho- I hope you guys enjoyed that show. And, and what Jason was talking about was, you know, I never intended to be someone who was on the radio or someone who spoke professionally for a living or someone who is doing this at all. Uh, I originally got into this, just to do a small story short, um, my mom was diagnosed with cancer in 1995. I was about 20 years old and it just blindsided our family and the doctors gave her a less than 10% chance of survival. And it rocked me. It really did. It was just a complete game changer. And so um, I went with her to a different alternative uh, therapy places. She went down to the Gerson Clinic in Mexico. Um, She went down to an Ayurvedic uh, situation, I think, in Carlsbad somewhere. And ultimately, she decided to go with the City of Hope, which is standard conventional treatment of chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, and stem cell bone marrow transplants, which I provided the platelets for. Uh, and watching her go through that was just unbelievable. I just, it really, I don't know why certain people are affected by traumatic events differently than others, kind of like what Jason was talking about, but it really rocked me to my core. And I watched what the chemo did to her body and to her life and thought to myself, there has to be another way of healing this. And why don't doctors know what's causing this, right? So at 20, I was just couldn't figure it out, you know? And I remember going to the doctor once for a routine checkup or something. I don't know. I was 20 years old and asked him why people are being diagnosed with cancer. He just, he said he didn't know. He said, it's probably because our testing is better. And even at 20 years old, I just thought this guy has no idea what he's talking about. He's, you know, you know how like you listen to someone and you, and you just know, like you just know, do they know what they're talking about? Or are they trying to come up with something, right? To just answer the question. And so I could see right through him. I just, I knew he didn't know. And so then that sat with me for a few years, you know, and I just knew that there was a bigger role that diet and lifestyle and environment played in our health, but just couldn't put my finger down on it because I knew that it was so difficult. Like, where do I start? Right. And, you know, this guy says this, this guy says that. It was just all so confusing. And so I just kind of, you know, kept living my life, but deep down, I knew something was wrong with why we were being diagnosed. And then a friend of mine gave me a book in 2003 called Fit for Life. Um, and then I, I, I read that and, whoa, that just changed my life. And um, I realized the role of minerals, of enzymes, and how these play a role in our physiology. And I, and I thought, wow, we can, not only can we prevent disease, but we could heal it naturally. Like, that didn't make any sense. How is that? Why wouldn't doctors know about that, right? And so I began to learn more and kind of dig the rabbit trail a little further and go down different rabbit trails and try to figure out what's going on. Then that led me to more books. That led me to, oh, gosh, what was his name? It was a raw food guy, Norman Walker, Dr. Norman Walker, and then Jay Cordage, that crazy guy on TV with the eyebrows that used to juice. And, you know, I got his, like, I think in the early 2000s, I got his like 10 part tape series. I'd listen to that. And then one day I was listening to coast to coast radio and David Wolf came on and he was supposed to have someone else on that day. And I thought, why would you invite this like 30 year old guy who doesn't really sound like he knows anything about health when I was looking forward to some other guests he was going to have on about health. But listening to him, it, it really was like, whoa, it changed my life forever. 
listening to him talk. And so then I decided to join the, ex not, not the Extreme Health Academy. <laughs> the Extreme Health Academy didn't exist back then. Uh, what was it called? The best day ever. So I learned and learned and learned. I started soaking up his knowledge. And then I went on this ride for seven years of um, being a 100% raw food vegan and just experimenting and trying different healing modalities and reading books and going to conferences. And it was just amazing. And I've been doing that ever since 2003. And so now that's what, almost 20 years. Um, and prior to that, I had gone on a trip around the world by myself right after 9-11, traveling and surfing and stuff like that. Um, so it was just time of exploration and learning and, um, you know, going on the hero's journey, like Joseph Campbell talks about, you know? And so I've been on that journey ever since 2003, really in the late nineties on subjects of a different matter, <clears throat> but you know, that's how I got involved in all this. And so then I started realizing like people need to know this information. How come no one knows? And then you start realizing there's suppression and there's industry involved, right? And there's uh, licenses and there's um, bureaucratic agencies trying to prevent you from speaking. And never has that been more timely than now, right? You can't speak certain things about the V word, the big C, little V. And so, um, yeah, it really, really changed my life. And so that's why I started learning so much. And I thought, you know, there's not many podcasts about health. And so let's start Extreme Health Radio in 2012. We 711 shows before this. We've been doing shows ever since. And so that's really ultimately my goal is to is to let you know that there's options. And my goal isn't really to say you shouldn't do chemotherapy, you shouldn't take vaccines or medication or pharmaceutical drugs or anything like that. My goal is to just let you know about all the options that are on the table that I know about and let you make your choice and and I will support you in whatever choice you want to make, you know? So if you want to go the allopathic route, there's nothing wrong with that. That's part of your journey and you get to do that if you want and there's no shame or guilt in that and I will support you in whatever you want to do and but I think there's a real issue when um certain philosophical aspects about health are being suppressed on purpose to get you to think that there's really only one answer. And that's what really kind of gets me angry is this idea that we need to suppress truth and information and options. Because when you have options, you can heal, right? If you know what all what your available options are, then you have what, what they call informed consent. And so this is what I try to provide is as much information as possible so we can make the best decisions for our life and our spiritual growth, right? So that's sort of my short story of how I got involved in all this. And I, I want to let you know, too, that um, I created or I am creating for this Big C Little V going on right now. Um, as you can imagine, I get emails from people with so much information about all different aspects of this, whether it's the um, injectable you know, items people are putting into their arm, or if it's the lockdowns, or if it's the masks, or what the agenda is, or what the solutions are from a health perspective for preventing this, or if you've gotten the injection, um, legal solutions. So I've got like 14 different categories of over 400 links. Um, so basically what I'm saying is like, let me do the research for you. And if you need help trying to convey this information to people that may be asking you questions, or maybe they're doubting the official narrative, or maybe they're just looking for more information from trusted, reliable sources. I've got over 400 links to articles, to research articles, to studies, to different papers, to videos of Dr. Fauci and you know, the head of the WHO saying, you know, admitting things and the CDC and all the data and the science, and I'm adding to it every single day. So what's cool about this little database I'm putting together is that when I add something, you'll see it. Um, so in order to get this, you just join our newsletter uh, and I'll put a link to the page. It's extremehealthradio.com slash subscribe. And when you subscribe to this, just a little caveat, I never intended for this to be something to give away. So I'm creating the database with a program called Workona, and it was the best option I knew about at the time, but it does require you to sign up for a free account. So what happens is you'll go to extremehealthradio.com slash subscribe, and I'm going to add the Big C Little V database image to that. But right now, um, there's an ebook giveaway called Lessons from the Miracle Doctors, but I've added the database to this. So you go there, you put your name and email address in, then you'll immediately get sent an email that you need to click on to, to confirm 
that you want to be involved or be, you know, receive our newsletter uh, that we send out twice a week. And then once you click the confirm button, uh, then I'll put a link to the database. And so then you click on the database link, uh, and then you sign up for a quick Workona account and boom, you got access to 400 plus research studies and all this information. I, I highly recommend it. Um, so you do need to sign up for a Workona account. It's free, but what's cool is that in real time, when I add new things to it, which I do every day, uh, you get access to that. So it's really kind of a cool system in that regard. And this is this is super empowering stuff. So if you have friends or family that are asking you, like, Sh like where's the data on this or that, you know, it's all there. So you can just go to the vaccine, you know, area, and you can click on all the studies, and there's you know probably hundreds of them there. So make sure to do that. And, um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that show. We'll put links to everything we talked about at extremehealthradio.com slash 712. So we'll put a link to uh, the sauna and to the surthrival colostrum, to the Green Wave Dirty Electricity Filters, as well as the Extreme Health Academy, and with a free coupon code, and then links to Jason Prawl's website um, and his Super Immunity Summit. I forget what it's called, but um, we'll put links to everything. It's got a really cool fancy name, but I forget what it is. Um, but cool. I, I really recommend getting involved with his work, uh, the Human Longevity film, and then this summit too, because it, it gets into the subconscious mind and what 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 causes someone to take action on certain things, and the self love that's involved in order to do that. Because there's a lot of people that say, "Yeah, I would love to do that, but I don't have the discipline." I'd love to do that, but X Y Z, and it really gets into a deep philosophical subconscious mind type of scenario and busting through those and, and having self love and wanting to take care of yourself for reasons, for multiple reasons, um, is the name of the game. And that's what causes someone like you to take action and someone like someone else to just think, Oh, that's a good idea, but I'll do it later. Um, so being one of those people that really takes action is, is ideal. Um, you get the best results that way. So I hope you enjoyed that show. That is extremehealthradio.com slash 712 for today's show page. I'll put everything that we talk about there. And one final thing too, um, if you are looking for supplements, um, I, I really, this is like the coolest thing because I'm really aligned with my friend, Matt Blackburn, and he's the owner of Mito Life. And I've often said that, um, you know, if you are looking to, um, make real changes in your health and looking for some good supplements. I really love Matt because his philosophical framework is totally in line with, with mine as well. And that is the, the cause of all disease is oxidation and mitochondrial damage as a result of that. And when your body is, when you remove the oxidation and inflammation through the Fenton reaction, that is how oxygen interacts with iron. When you understand that, then you can start lowering that. And when you start realizing that, oh my gosh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, fish oils, canola oil, all these toxic oils, even the good stuff that's, that's done in a really pristine way when put into a tropical 98.6 degree body oxidizes when exposed to that level of heat. And so when you start realizing, wow, oxidation and yellow fat disease, and how do you turn that down and put out those fires? Um, you know, this is what Mito Life is all about. It's all about the mitochondria reducing oxidative stress, which is the number one cause of all disease. So he's got some really great enzymes. He's got a really great Shilajit product that helps get rid of excess iron in your body um, that delivers perfect array of minerals in your body in tablet form. It's, it's like the crushed or uh, compressed resin. I mean, he's got some awesome, awesome products. And so Anyway, there's a 15% discount code if you guys want to check out Mito Life, and I really like supporting him because I, I know him personally. I've known him for years. He's a listener of our show, and he's got a great podcast too to check out Mito Life Radio, and I like supporting him because of his integrity. And, I, and again, I know him personally, and I really love and agree with his philosophical foundation um, of health. And I like if he were like a multi-level marketing kind of company. This would be the kind of company I would want to create or be involved with, right? Um, but fortunately, he's not, and I, I, I don't really like those kinds of companies. Um, but his is awesome. It's just amazing. So start with his podcast, listen to his show, uh, and, and anytime you want to purchase any of his products, just go to Mito Life and or go to our store, biochargeme.com, click over, and then use our coupon code. That way, 
you support his work, you support our work, and but most importantly, you get the best product ever. So Mito Life has got the best supplements. And like I t I've told him before, dude, if I were starting a company, I'd be starting Mito Life. I'd be doing the products you're doing for the exact same reasons. So rather than do that myself, I'll just, you know, promote Matt and uh, <laughs> and support his work and then also um, offer you guys great stuff too. So we have his uh, products in our store, biochargeme.com. So I really appreciate you guys. Make sure to join our newsletter list to get access to that database. If you're looking for any supplements, go to Mito Life, and I'll put links to Mito Life as well uh, in today's show, as well as um, the human longevity film and the different summits that... Um, that Jason has coming up as well as the relaxed sauna and all that good stuff. So hope you enjoyed that show. Pass it on to your friends. Um, tag us on Instagram if you would and follow us on there too. Um, I would love that. Um, nothing makes me more happy than to see when people like tag me um, as they're listening to the show. And it's so cool. Like I love seeing that. Like if you're out jogging or running some errands or whatever and you tag us in your stories or whatever, that's so cool. I love seeing how and where people are listening to our show. It just makes me so happy. So that's our goal, to help empower you, let you know there's options to heal. And the medical industrial complex is not the only way to heal. And you can do this on your own. So um, I love you all. Thank you again for just being a part of our show. Thank you for everything over the years, for the last 10, 12 years. You guys have been just incredibly amazing. And I, I really appreciate that so much. Like you guys have no idea, like you, the reviews you leave when you buy through our Amazon link, when you support us on Patreon or you, or you become a member or just buy any of our products there, just send emails in too. Like that's so amazing. Like it just, it really helps us. And you know, every now and then we get some really bad comments from people or something, and then we'll get a really great one and just kind of offsets that a little bit. And just knowing that we're helping people, is just so great. So that's the goal, help as many people wake up and become empowered and to live their best life and to, and to become the fullest expression of who they're supposed to be. And that's the name of the game, right? All right, guys, again, I'll put everything at extremehealthradio.com slash 712 for today's show. Love you all. Appreciate you, and I will see you next week. No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even if you educate yourself in the field of live food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers medical advice of any kind. None of the information offered here should be interpreted as a diagnosis of any disease, nor an attempt to treat or prevent any disease or condition. While information in this blog is discussed in the context of numerous conditions, it can be dangerous to take action based on any information in this blog or to start any health program without first consulting a health professional. The content found here is for informational purposes only and is in no way intended as medical advice, as a substitute for medical counseling, or as a treatment slash cure for any disease or health condition, and nor should it be continued as such. Always work with a qualified healthcare professional before making any changes to your diet, prescription drug use, lifestyle, or exercise activities. This information is provided as is, and the reader slash viewer assumes all risks from the use, non-use, or misuse of this information.